This presentation is about typography and that's actually one of my favorite areas of graphic design is learning about how typography and different typefaces can affect certain designs. So we're going to learn a lot about different uh, terms used within typography, different um, uh, types of typography, styles, that type of thing. So let's jump in. So what really is typography? Is typography a font? Is a typeface typography? Is a font a typeface? I mean, what is that? Typography is the process and art of arranging type on a page. And I think that's really important to remember that typography is not only a process, but it's an art as well. Um, one that you could take an entire class on. You could take a whole semester's worth of a typography class and still not learn all there is to know about typography trends and that type of thing. So as you can see on this um, paper right here, it's just uh, how type is arranged on a page. So we just learned that typography is the art and process of arranging type on a page. So what is a typeface? What is a font? Well, typefaces are distinctive designs of visual symbols that are used to compose a printed image, also known as fonts. So lots of different fonts you have on your computer are also typefaces. The terms can be used interchangeably. Now, a typographer is someone who designs typefaces. Have you ever wanted to have um, like a font of your own handwriting so that you could, you know, type it up and it looks like you wrote it? Oh, I know I have. And um, if I really made that font, I would be a typographer. And there's lots of different typographers on the internet who just design typefaces and fonts for fun. And then they post them online and you can download them for free. So this image on this slide is just an example of a typeface. Okay, next slide. Okay, so we know typography, we know typefaces, we know fonts. What are type styles and type families? Well, they're kind of just more specific versions of these things. Each, we're kind of getting more specific each time we go on to the next slide. A type style is like um, a bold version of the font, an italics, an extended, or a condensed version. And a type family is a group of type styles based on one typeface. So if you look at this example here on the picture, Franklin Gothic, it has um, a heavy, a medium, a condensed version, that type of thing. So it's a group of type styles that are all bundled together in one happy little family. But each one of those, like just Franklin Gothic book, that is just a type style. Franklin Gothic medium, that is just a type style. But all of them grouped together belong to the same type family. All right, so we're learning all this great new um, vocabulary when it comes to typography. So what's type sizes? Well, I bet you can guess type sizes is the different size of the typeface or the font. You can kind of see in this image here, the font gets bigger, the bigger the number. So type sizes are one measured in points. So, you know, most default word processing programs start off with 11 point font or 12 point font. And that just means that 72 points is about an inch tall on the page. And body text is usually 10 to 12 point in a word processing program. So it's just kind of a way to measure how big the font is as compared to um, height on the page. So if you want a bigger font, increase the points. Smaller font, decrease them. So the weight of a font or typeface is really what is called the thickness of the outline of a letter. So as you can see here in these two examples, you've got this one font on the top left, and then you've kind of got it a little bit bolder down here on the bottom right. So that weight is said to be heavier than the one that is just regular. So as the lines around the font get bigger, the thickness increases and therefore the weight increases. So just pressing bold sometimes isn't 
all that you can do. You can add what's called an outline around it in certain graphic programs that will just add a, it will keep adding lines, points of thickness to the font until it gets really big and thick and then it would be really heavy. Kerning is definitely a term I would know and memorize because it's one that graphic designers use all the time. Kerning is the space between two letters. So take a look at this picture here. We've got an F next to an I. See on the, on the left, the F is scooted closer to the I, and on the right, it's kind of scooted a little bit to the left of the I. That space right there is an adjustment of the kerning. Same with the A and the V. Do you see how on the left, there's a lot of space there, and on the right, they're kind of scooted in a little bit closer together? Same with the V and the comma. So when you're designing logos, um, billboards, anything with words, you're going to always want to go through and check the kerning between all of your letters and make sure that there's no letter that looks like it's off a little bit or funky. Like sometimes when you do a W and then a letter next to it, um, it looks like there's a lot of space between those letters, so you might want to adjust the kerning. So keep that in mind. That is something that's extraordinarily important in graphic design. So we just learned that kerning is the space between two individual letters. Leading is the vertical space between lines of type. And this is also a really good one for graphic designers to learn because you will be adjusting the leading when you have um, multiple lines of type. So take a look at this example here. Um, the top one, do you see like lorem ipsum dollar sit amet consitur, whatever. But do you see the space between lorem and consitur? And you go to the next example on the space between lorem and consitur on the bottom one. The bottom one has more letting than the top one. So that's something you can adjust in your designs to kind of maybe make things easier to read or fill up a space better, that type of thing. So make sure you know the difference between kerning and letting. Now, tracking is also an important term to know. So remember, make sure you know the difference between kerning, letting, and tracking. Kerning is the space between two individual letters. Tracking is the space adjustment for groups of letters and entire blocks of text. So you see in this example, we've got some symbols here. And there has been a space adjustment between each of those letters. So it's like you did the same amount of kerning to each pair of letters there. So, but tracking applies that whole adjustment to the whole block of text or the whole word or the whole group of letters. So kerning to individual letters, tracking, space adjustment for groups of letters or entire blocks of text. Now line length is something that you as a designer will definitely want to keep in mind during your designs, of, of, or at least of using words in your designs. So look at this first example here. It says, how hard is this line to read for you? Be honest and keep reading this line because it is very long. When you first glance at the slide, that doesn't have very good readability. You can't really just look at it and know what it's talking about or whatever. It's really long. Now let's look at this next example. Do short line lengths work better for you? It's kind of choppy. It, it's just chopped up into things. It doesn't really flow. So what you want to do is just keep line length in mind when you're designing. Maybe ask for feedback from fellow designer. Um, it's just really important to make sure the readability is at its best. So we've learned a lot of different vocabulary that's associated with typography. Now let's look at the five type categories that fonts and typefaces are sorted into. Those categories are serif, sans serif, square serifs, script, or decorative. Let's look at examples of each one. And this is definitely something I would remember because you might be asked sometime, 
what type category does this font fall into? And you'll need to say, oh, that's a sans serif font. Or maybe later when you're designing something, I'll say, oh, try it with a serif font. Try adding serifs. Maybe that would make it look more professional or something. And you want to you want to know what I'm talking about. So make sure you remember these. So the first category is serifs. And it's nice to know that Romans invented serifs. So this type of font has been around an extremely long time. You can tell when a font has serifs if it has these little things poking off of the ends of the font. Um, so do you see all these parts of this typeface that are highlighted in red? Those are what are called serifs. And they're actually said to make fonts a lot more readable in a smaller um, setting. So that's why most like novels and books are written in a serif or printed in a serif font because it's supposed to increase readability and make it easier to read when the font is smaller. So this type of font is called a sans serif and I like to remember it because sans means without and so when I get confused um, between serifs and sans serif because I don't know sometimes I just forget which one is which I remember that sans means without and so I look at uh, fonts or typefaces like this and I don't see any little um, bitty uh, flared things at the end of the font so I know that this is a sans serif instead of a serif. So sans serif fonts are said to be slightly less readable but they're also very classic have a very modern clean cut look so really depends on what you're going for in your design whether you choose to use a serif or a sans serif. Now square serifs are another category and they're just um, they've got a little bit of a different type of serif on the end of them. As you can see, well, I mean, you kind of have to look in real close on this example here, but the bottoms of the letters or the tops or wherever the serif is doesn't really flare out. It appears to have a slab shaped serif, so more like a straight line as a serif or, you know, like a little rectangle or something, you know, as opposed to the little rounded out thing. And this was a very popular font in the 1800s, so you'll see uh, square serifs on lots of old antique things, um, printed memorabilia, that type of stuff. Now I bet you can guess what the script uh, font category would be, but uh, let's go over it anyway. A script font would be modeled after handwriting, it often includes flourishes, and they're often really hard to read. That's why you probably wouldn't see um, a script font, like a novel being printed in a script font. But you would might see a logo, and they're often, you know, denote fanciness, um, uh, flourishes, you know, elegance, over the topness. So you might want to use a script font when you're going for that type of feel for a company in a logo, that type of thing. All right, the last category would be what's called a decorative type font. And these are really hard to categorize because there's so many different fonts that fall into this decorative category. You can see I've selected two. Um, that I had installed on my computer. One is like this uh, piratey font here and this one is just a font that I had on my computer. As you can tell it doesn't really fall into the serif, sans serif, slab or square serif or script categories. So everything else kind of falls into here and as you can tell they're bad readability so most of them are pretty hard to read. And these types of fonts are used to set moods and themes of things. So if I was having a pirate birthday party, I would want to find this great pirate font and put Ashley's having a birthday party at the top or whatever. And it would really set the mood of the thing I was designing. So there's lots of different fonts that fall into this category. Just remember, if it's not a serif, sans serif, square serif, or a script font, it's got to be decorative.
All right, so the last thing I just want to touch on really quick in regards to typography is type alignment. And this doesn't really fit in with anything we've talked about in regards to um, typography, vocabulary, kerning, tracking, letting, that type of thing, or type categories, serif, sans serif, decorative, that type of thing. Type alignment is where your type is either flush on the left of something, ragged on the right, it's justified, meaning that the type is goes all the way to the end of the paper, goes starts in the next line, goes all the way to the end, so there's no ragged edge anywhere. You can also have alignment flush on the right and have a ragged left edge. You can center your type alignment, and you can also have asymmetrical type alignment, which is where lines are composed with asymmetrical balance, not conforming to a set arrangement. So if I had, a, you know, a, I had the type kind of making a shape of a flower or something, that's not really flush left, flush right, or centered. It's kind of an asymmetrical alignment. So alignment, again, is just where the type is next to a margin on the page. Well, that's it for this typography slideshow. I would go back and review and make sure I knew everything that was discussed in the slideshow today, the five different type categories, as well as the typography vocabulary we've gone over, differences between type families, type faces, typography, that type of thing. And as always, if you have any questions, come to your instructor and I will be more than happy to assist you.